Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our presentation entitled Smavo and Smart Successes of e Agricultural Technologies in South Africa. This presentation will be presented by myself, Andre Ekman. Both myself and Professor Weinhard Stein represent the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Pretoria in South Africa. I'm currently a final year PhD candidate specializing in railway engineering, looking at how we can leverage neural networks and artificial intelligence technologies to improve condition monitoring of our railway infrastructure. Professor Weinhard Stein is the head of the Department of Civil Engineering and the co-supervisor for the content that you will be seeing today. This presentation covers some truly unique and novel instrumentation which we developed, termed Smather and Smarter, and how these instruments were utilized in investigating the post-harvest life cycle of fresh produce, specifically of tomatoes and avocados, the unique insights that we could gain into this vast and complex transportation chain, very interlinked and intertwined of various facets, and some of the interesting conclusions that we could derive from all of these statistics, specifically to classify the performance of packhouses, and looking at the different types of regimes, uh, depending on whether you're considering pack houses or long haul transportation of this fresh produce. Finally, we look at some of the more recent wireless communications technologies and how these can potentially be leveraged to take this from a research project into a viable product that can benefit both the consumer and farm. So typically your post-harvest life cycle can be summarized as a farm to fork approach. Once that fruit is harvested from the farm, it immediately becomes part of a very complex and interlinked transportation chain, which is not all that well understood owing to the difficulty of instrumenting uh, all the parameters and environmental effects that go into that transportation chain. This can be not optimize certain aspects of this once we can obtain additional insight and detailed data into the various facets of the transportation chain to reduce the losses and improve the profits of our local farmers. Can we not then also use modern technologies, both electronics and additive manufacturing techniques to monitor this post-harvest this post -harvest life cycle? And the answer is yes, this is exactly what we did with this research project. So our core research objectives first focused on the development of smart fruit sensor platforms, so Smavo and Smarto. This is short for Smart Avocado and Smart Tomato, respectively. Using these instruments, we could discern, classify, and identify unique characteristics of what we term optimized and unoptimized avocado packhouses. It most important to note that a given avocado packhouse, it's not inherently bad or poor performance, but considering a larger population of pack houses, some will perform better than others. And what can we learn about the differences from these two in the terms optimized and optimized pack houses? Finally, we can reprogram these devices to also monitor the long haul, the long haul road transportation links, specifically of the motos, and for the pack house performance also of the motos and then the pack houses. So to develop this sensor platform, we considered using off-the-shelf technology that is uh, readily affordable and has a fast development time. We also had to consider the waterproof uh, nature of these devices, which were required given the pack houses is uh, characteristics of um, chemical sprays and also water baths. And the electronic platform of choice was the Arduino microcontroller family, specifically the tiny Arduino product line is a series of miniaturized electronic circuit boards that contains both uh, the microprocessor, a number of different sensors, and the non-volatile storage to store all of the data. So the sensors of interest, which we included in the sensor platform, it's the tri-axis accelerometer and tri-axis gyroscope, the two most important ones, measuring accelerations so in a linear fashion and then rotational velocities of the sensor platform. Together with that, we have the barometer measuring ambient air temperature, light intensity, temperature, relative humidity, and it even includes a GPS sensor to obtain the geolocation of the sensor platform should the signal be strong, strong enough and available depending on where it is throughout the transportation process. We utilized additive manufacturing techniques known popularly as 3D printing to ensure that these devices are really representative of the biological counterparts. So we utilized a material called um, TPU or thermo thermopolyurethane, 
uh, and it's can be characterized as a flexible type of filament, so representative of the real fruit. The initial verification took place on a commercial avocado farm just to test the robustness and the viability of the sensors. Once we saw that that was functioning correctly, for the avocado pack houses, we focused on 24 different pack houses uh, spread across three provinces. And in total, we gathered more than 130 viable complete samples for all of those pack houses. After which, we considered the transportation of tomatoes, specifically between Tsenin and the Pretoria markets, and then Tsenin and Cape Town. So this is a distance of approximately 350 and 1,800 kilometers respectively. Owing to the unique nature of these devices, we can program them specifically to ensure that the battery is optimized to cover this entire distance and the required period of time to collect all of this data. Next, once we collected all the data, more than 12 million data points in total, we used uh, the popular programming language uh, called Python to develop very unique descriptive statistics to dilute the, in, the valuable information contained within these large data sets. These descriptive statistics are the cumulative kinetic energy that relates the amount of work imparted on the uh, sensor platform itself, how much energy had to be absorbed, free fall events and distances. So the accelerometer can uniquely identify free fall events, i.e. when it's thrown, when it's dropped between conveyors, as well as calculating the distance of those uh, individual events. Using these two statistics, if we plot them one against the other, we produce what's called the packhouse process quadrants, which you'll see in a moment. And from this, we derive the damage index score. So single numerical value assigned for a particular packhouse for a particular uh, smever run through this packhouse. And this is typically what the uh, uh, PPQ looks like. Uh, if we plot on the x-axis the total free fall distance and on the y-axis the CKE as mentioned, we can divide this into four quadrants using the average value of those two statistics, respectively. On the bottom left-hand corner, we consider these samples to be representative of an optimized backhouse. So typically, where we have a minimum uh, total freefall distance, so where the instruments are not dropped that often, and then, of course, the fruits, as well as uh, reducing the amount of energy imparted into that fruit to reduce bruising, uh, marks on the fruit and then bursting of the skin, which can lead to infections. On the opposite uh, side of the quadrant, we have a, a large uh, free fall distance as well as a, a high degree of energy absorption. And this we can consider unoptimized or undesirable. We can then assign a score, for example, one for the bottom left hand quadrant, and then on the most extreme case, a score of four for the unoptimized back houses. Again, the damage index score. So the quadrant is a easy method for the entire population of uh, samples of these back houses to assign a damage index score based on this massive amount of data that we typically generate. We can also plot all the other statistics and group them together on a per backhouse sample, and from this we identify the most optimized backhouse, a average backhouse, and then the least optimized backhouse, uh, which exhibited the largest or the greatest amount of mechanical work, total free fall distance, etc. So again, looking at the bigger picture. Here's an example of the acceleration history between the optimized and unoptimized samples, as we just mentioned. On the left-hand side, you can see the acceleration history of a particular smother. And the section highlighted here over the short duration and small amplitude that is associated with the roller mechanisms on which the chemical sprays and waxes uh, are applied to the avocado's uh, skin. And on the right-hand side, the unoptimized backups. So a much longer duration with which the uh, smother was uh, present within these rollers, as well as a much larger amplitude of acceleration which uh, the smother experienced. This is owing to the larger diameter of the rollers as well as the rotational velocity thereof, increasing the amount of energy that was absorbed in the process, uh, and the total free fall distance also had a correlation with the final damage index score. So again, the two extremes, we can see a very clear and defined difference between these two back houses. Considering the different mechanisms of transportation, for packhouses, we typically have a uniform distribution of acceleration vectors. And again, it's over a short period of time with some very high um, amplitude accelerations as well. 
In contrast, when we transport uh, the avocados and tomatoes by road, they are typically stationary in their boxed containers. And these uh, acceleration vectors and forces are confined to a small concentrated area. But again, small amplitude of a much, much longer period of time. So two very different and distinct mechanisms uh, working in on the produce. So these uh, few examples and the statistics just illustrated how we can gain an improved understanding of this complex environment character characterized by pack houses and in the much longer road transportation portion. We could uh, develop a statistic uh, statistical method by which to classify these pack houses and give them a specific score. And currently we have a trial underway to monitor the performance when we ship these uh, instruments by ship across the world to the European Union and see how this compares to the pack house and then the road transportation sections. So looking at the bigger picture and thinking a bit more long term, recently we've uh, deployed what is termed a low power long range wireless area networks or LoRaWAN technology. This is ideal for agricultural applications where we desire very long range communications but only require very small bandwidth. So for example, sending values like temperature and relative humidity every so often. And currently we are installing gateways across the, the different campuses of the University of Victoria, including, including the Engineering 4 facility, where we are actively trialing these different um, technologies and sensors we can buy off the shelf. So one can imagine with a SMAVA or SMARTO 2.0 or 4.0 rather, we can include these communications technologies and using these models which we have now developed and calibrated, we can give this to the farmers, to the backhouse managers and then the logistics experts that are responsible for transporting the produce over either the country or internationally, where we can have a continuous online eye exactly to understand what's happening in the process. Over a long period of time, we can monitor changes in the behavior and the DIS, for example, whether that's specific to a particular pack house where one element might be malfunctioning, or then transportation by road to keep an eye on the condition of the road. The worse the condition of the road, the more vibrations and impact forces will be imparted on the produce, which reduces the ultimate quality. This can also address some of the current challenges experienced with the theft of avocados and uh, farm security owing to the long range uh, communication capabilities of this technology, as well as the power efficiency thereof that can run for months on batteries. So we would like to thank the South African Avocado Growers Association, as well as the Post Harvest Initiative, for providing the funding that we needed to undertake this project, as well as all the farm managers, the farmers, and everyone else involved in the agricultural sector who, who welcomed us to instrument all of the backhouses, also providing us with very valuable qualitative feedback, opinions, and ideas, which we also incorporated into the final report. And then Sardo Kutzer and Dave Ventura, with their unique expertise uh, and drive to instrument all of the back houses, despite also uh, the pandemic which occurred during 2020 when we had to conduct the research project. Thank you also for, for your efforts. So that brings uh, me to the end of this presentation. We have our contact information available as well as the various websites and links which might be of interest, also linking to the SMAVA and SMARTO research project. Um, thank you for your time and attention in listening to all the developments that we're doing, uh, not just on the SMAVA and Smart itself, but also thinking long term on how we can improve the, the industry as a whole, addressing some of the shortcomings. We welcome any questions and we'll try our best to answer them. So with that, thank you very much.